So tell me about the $7 million chain, man. What was that about? Hey, I don't know what that was about. That was about, hey, listen, it was almost like one of those drug dealers. I was down to my last seven. I couldn't find nothing else to invest in but a damn chain. What's up, man? Hey, what up? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm up here. I'm in Newport Beach. I'm with my crew here, and we're having a ball. Nice. Newport Beach, Virginia or California? California. California, dude. That's right. Y'all lucky, man. What's up with the fire, man? It's not hot out there? It's very hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> I need some fire right now. That's what I need yeah, a, bro. a drink. Can we That's smoke right. this program? That's right. Happy 420, my brother. How long you been doing the podcast for? Um, I don't know. 18 months, probably. How you like it? Hey, it's pretty awesome. You know why? Because it's really, it's just me trying to, it's me, I don't know, it's me trying to explain to people that I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but still I know <laughs> what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you know no doubt. I mean? you know yeah, saying? no doubt. You're seeing some real shit in life, man, for real. I know you got real stories. What's that yeah. you're smoking on? I'm smoking on this beautiful Tyson Kush, man, the toad. That's right. You got your farm going, too. Oh, Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully one time, one day, if you don't have anything to do, you can bring the wife or family and come have a vacation with us. Yeah, man, we would love it. I can't wait to bring the kids. How, how old is your littlest one? My smallest one is seven. No, nine. Okay. And the oldest is? Thirty. 30, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice range, man. So what are you doing every day besides the podcast? Just hanging yeah, with the babies? Every day. Every day I'm working out. I'm getting up every day. I'm doing my hour on my bike. And then I do an hour on my treadmill. Then I come out and do the weights, some light weights. Watch yeah. Try, try to get some running in. Try yeah. To you still hitting bags? I'm going there. I'm getting ready to go there. Another week or two, I'm going to hit the bag. Oh, God. So, how? I mean, do you think a normal person can take a punch from him? I don't know. What is a normal person? <laughs> like me. Like a person know. like me. Like a non-athletic type person. It has nothing to do with someone being non-athletic. It has to do with your morale. Uh-huh. You no know, fighting and style, it has nothing to do. Fighting has a lot to do with your, mo your your morality. Yeah. And how you like your ferociousness to no, um, stand up to it and take it? No, it's not about taking it. It's about, um, I don't know, the willingness to die. That's what life is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Once you look willingness at to stand up and face that fire. You from that perspective, then you no longer have to fear it. Cause that's really what it gotcha. is. We really don't know who we are and where we came from. We say we're, we're the Asiatic black men, we were this, we're that, but we don't know where we are or who we are. And we don't know if 10,000 yeah. years ago, if we were yeah. white, Chinese, blue, black, or green. We don't know anything about ourselves. Right. <laughs> that's crazy, man. So what moment was it for you where you knew that you could handle being a fighter? I never thought I could handle being a fighter. I just, it just was, and it happened. But uh -huh. able to handle, no, I've never been able to handle being a fighter. So do you, I mean, did you get nervous before each fight or did, did you have a point where you got past all that? No, you, you always get nervous. I'm nervous now. You just get nervous. That's just, that's the part of living life and overcoming <laughs> nervousness. Yeah. It actually happens. Yeah. Yeah, and just be like, you know, Fuck it, whatever happens, happens. I believe, from my experience in life, I believe that feeling of being what we call scared or nervous is some form of natural defense mechanism. Uh huh. And only two things happen when you have that feeling. You even, um, you rise to the occasion or you just freeze. Those are the only two things that happen. You get squatted right. or you turn into the predator. You know, your prey, you turn into the predator. It's just a weird psychology, isn't it? And some guys could be yeah, some guys absolutely. Could be 90 pounds and have that mentality. I know. That shit it has is nothing crazy. to do with size or anything. It has to do with your morality. 
I mean, I talk about this a lot because I get nervous still before we perform shows. And like, you know, that's the one thing I've been doing all my life. So you would think that I would get past that kind of, you know, reaction to every time I got to perform in front of people. But, you know, different people say, if you really care, you're going to feel it every time because you care about the outcome of what's going to happen. So, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Believe it or not, that nervousness is a, a small exponent of our ego. Mm -hmm. It's ego. And it's challenging ourselves. Yeah. So you learn to let that ego go, and then you can kind of feel free of that burden a little bit, is what you're saying. But how do we let it go? Really, tell me the truth. How do we let it go? Show me, that, show me the enlightened one that lets it go. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Some people try to cope with, you know, smoking weed or drinking or whatever to try to, like, you know, numb that feeling or whatever. But I don't know exactly how you let it go at all because... It's a part of you. Yes. For instance, I thought I could, I took a medicine. I took an ancient medicine once. It was called, called a toad. And it's real ancient. It's probably hundreds of thousands of years old. It's probably as old as mankind, probably, probably uh -huh. millions. Right? So I took this medicine, right? And for instance, my, my ego was annihilated. No, I'm not, it was annihilated, but I'm not going to use that word. My ego disintegrated. Right. So it happened very quickly. So when that happened, you know what happened to me? And I had no idea. When I left my ego, I screamed. Boom, at the top of my lungs. Like people were kicking my ass and I was yeah. scared to death. And um, that was the most frightening feeling I ever had in my life. To this day, I never had a feeling that frightening when I lost my ego. Crazy. And I believe if that happened to everybody, everybody would be crawling on their knees afraid of bugs. Yeah, a thousand percent, man, because it's almost a, a part of your self identity is your ego. You know what I mean? So if you lose that, you lose like sense of self and you feel even more lost than you were before, you know? This is what I just, I discovered about the ego. The ego is a Maya. Maya is, our, is an illusion of yourself. It doesn't even mm -hmm. exist, but our ego creates that. And that's why we fall in love with that ego. Uh-huh. That's crazy. It protects you. It's not good sometimes because it only, our ego is only sometimes it makes it, it puts us in the, the, the glass ceiling. We can only go so far because it protects us from uh, pushing ourselves further. Right. It thinks yeah. it's going to hurt him. So he doesn't want to feel that pain. So he said, don't do it. Right. Don't take that chance. Right. And it holds us back. And that's why we have to let it go only for that moment. But we have to take it back. Don't, yeah. get, don't lose it. Just, just part with it for a moment. Yeah. I need to learn some tips on how to part with it. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I'm like going into, you know, unfamiliar territories and shit like that because I've been starting to do stand up comedy and that's not really what I do. I always grew up just being a performer, you know, like on television or in theater or whatever. But the whole like stand up comedy, like Dave Chappelle and Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock and all of that, I never grew up in that. But since I've been doing comedy for so long, I'm starting to get pushed now, into that. You could have fooled me. I always look at you as a stand-up comedian. That's so funny. I mean, I'm, I always you know, thought I'm, you were a stand-up comedian. I saw you. I, I saw you do a form of stand-up. Matter of fact, I was watching you just now when I was in the the um the um the script with you. That was a form of stand-up right there. You were performing like you were a stand-up guy, even though it was like yeah. um um, um Sharpton imitation, but that was a form of stand-up. Yeah, what's up with See, that? That's our but, ego yeah. telling us that we can't do something because it wants to hold us back because it doesn't want to work hard. Right. I mean, so it it's really just work, work hard, but it doesn't get the strain of your work. But it wants, yeah. it wants all the it wants all um all the pleasure from it though. It wants to say, hey, yeah, I did this, I done this, I done that. Right. Yeah, Without having to do the work. Yeah. Gotta true. do the work. No way around it. You wanna build up a solid body and a solid defense system, you gotta do the work. How old are you now? I'm forty one, about to be forty two. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Everything about dying? Yeah, I mean, once you start having kids, you think about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got two babies mortality. now. If you look at your kids, you see your mortality. Yeah, a thousand percent. Or you see what life will be like once I'm gone, you know, or just start imagining those kinds of things, you know. As life goes on and they go on through their life, you start realizing that you can't really be there the whole time, you know what I'm saying, that they're there and you just count the blessings of the days that you are there, I guess. How do you look at that situation with your children and your wife? Do you believe that they're yours 
What do you believe? Do you believe that your work is a genius to make something else work? Or you believe that this man makes some money, this is my wife, these are my kids, they listen to what I say, I'm the boss of that. How does that work? No, nah, I, I don't think it, you know, I look at them like they belong to me necessarily, like not at all. I know, you know, lots of different things can happen at any given moment in life. So I can't like act like I have control over all those aspects. I look at it more like I'm blessed to be around them in whatever situation has caused me to be that. I'm, you know, my wife's husband, I'm my, my children's father. And that's, you know, the situation that I've been placed in and their lives basically so i'm just looking at it as a blessing to even be involved with their lives you know what i mean and like everybody's paths in the universe is crossing for whatever reason do you ever think that um i would look at my children and myself i look at my mother and my father and i look at them it's like you know, i have feelings for them but it's also we had a relationship and i think feel, i feel like my mother and father are just my vessel yeah I mean, that's what they say, your children and I come... Received, I received parenting from other people. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say. Talking to Mike Tyson, this is my wife right here. Hi, how are you doing? How you doing, ma'am? Hi. <laughs> but yeah, they You're say your lovely. children come through you. They don't come, you know, from you necessarily. So yeah, I've always felt like, you know, my parents were definitely a vessel for me and I'm a vessel for my kids. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. I noticed that um, my kids really don't belong to me because you know, I'm going to let them in. I, I'm a control freak, even though when I know I'm control. How do you know if I'm a control freak? But I know I have <laughs> That's really crazy. Because it's wrong to me. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, man. That's so cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on around here. Yeah, that's the thing that should be going on. So yeah, man, it's just a, it's just a blessing to be able to witness this, you know? Like my part is done. I think, you know, I'm here for more like support, but as far as like me trying to tell them what's going to happen or you know what they need to be doing more, more of an assistant coach as opposed to be a team, you know what I mean? Absolutely, a hundred percent. I'm still I still juggle with um dealing with my children yeah. and their personality. It's weird you have somebody and you love them. It's unbelievable. From you and you say, hey, what the hell did that come from? You know, after you say you say, hey, I don't know if I might like I'm this. I'm trying thing. to tell you, you can't <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, like, you can't choose the kind of personality your kids come 100%. out with. You can try yeah, to, 100%. Because I don't know anybody that's the person. What happened? What happened? It's okay. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> see, talk to Mike. Look at Mike. You see Mike go to bed? What happened? What are you doing? It's not good. <laughs> he fell down. Okay, baby. <laughs> Is she trying to get out of yet? You okay. She's okay. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Oh, man, that's right. Yeah, man, life is beautiful, man. I'm a blessed individual. You are too, man. Oh, no, I'm Seriously. Totally, totally grateful. I'm totally grateful. Listen, I was very grateful at the worst of my life. I, I, I've never not been grateful. Yeah. So tell me about the $7 million chain, man. What was that about? <laughs> hey, I don't know what that was about. That was about, hey, listen, it was almost like one of those drug dealers. I was down to my last seven. I couldn't find nothing else to invest in but a damn chain. <laughs> Straight up. Real nigga. You still shit. got it? Huh? You still got the chain? Oh, no, I guess I, my wife got that in the divorce, baby. Wow. Yeah. That's one of them things. No, that's that's all of those things. <laughs> Your word. That's all of them things, man. Well, man. I'm so happy to experience that. Though. I, I'm so happy to experience the life that I had to come from like a brothel to be who I am now. That is fucking awesome. I'm so happy with my life in that perspective. Man. Absolutely, brother. From like an outside perspective, watching your life, man, is like you're unstoppable. 
I, I've seen you go from, you know, the ultimate highs to some would say ultimate lows to right back to highs again. You know what I mean? Just because you're so persistent in being true to yourself, number one. And I think that's what people love from you. You know, like you're the most, one of the most genuine celebrity type people that there ever has been. You know, you're just a real individual. That will always, I think, continue to pay forward, you know, opportunities for you to make money on that. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a beautiful thing. I can only admire somebody whose brand is so true to themselves that they can't be stopped. It's a, it's a real force. Hey, that's interesting that you think that way about me and stuff. And at this stage of my life, this is really interesting that I'm, I'm perceived that way because I look at life now and I, life is all about less now. My whole life was about being a glutton, but now it's all about less. Yep. And then I'm looking at some of the spiritual books and yeah. they're talking about stuff, that we have too much stuff. And we don't even share it. We don't even use it, but we don't even share it and give it to nobody. I have millions of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stuff that I haven't worn in 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you know. Just, it's just so much stuff. Yeah. The beauty of it is that you got time to figure out what to do with it, you know, and like, I feel like the Mike Tyson Museum is going to be an awesome destination once we get that up and running. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know if y'all thinking about that, but you should be because well, your life has been epic. Stuff, the stuff I have in my closet needs to go to some people that need that stuff. It can't get, it's just going to yeah, man. be a waste of mothballs. They'll waste too much money on mothballs. Yeah, no. Nah. You know, <laughs> you know hey, we don't need to invest in mothballs. Give that shit away. They got Salvation Army That's around true. you, I'm sure. I was so, I was so, um, I was so, um, I was such a consumer. I used to consume everything. I yeah. had no idea that was the, that was the plan. That for the stupid people or the consumers are the stupid people. I learned that late in life. I had to read. I, mean, I had to read the mother that died two thousand years ago to find that out. Huh? That's what I'm saying. But you think that comes from growing up without for so uh, long? You know what I mean? Yeah. So once you get it, you want to start getting everything you ever even dreamed of, and then those dreams are coming true. The fact that you can buy that shit, so you start buying more shit. Yeah, stuff I never use. Yeah. You don't even want. Yeah. Because I got caught up with being in the consumer world. I was one of those guys that got caught up. It didn't, it didn't appear that way. I was packaged different, but I was still that rat running around in that little mm -hmm. thing. What's that little wheel? Yeah, the little wheel. Yeah, I always wanted to avoid being that guy, but I was just that guy on a big level that you couldn't see him unless you were yeah. bigger. It's so funny because a lot of the image we have of you is still just with the black trunks, you know what I'm saying, and the black shoes just ready, you know what I'm saying? No robe, no none of that, just straight coming in and getting ready to business. So a lot of people weren't able to see that other side of your life, you know? So it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about, like, being such a consumer because your presence when you come to fight was just, you know, down and dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need none but these gloves and these shorts, and that's it. I don't need no hoopla, no none of that. Well, for that, I needed to be that guy. But right. I, wanted, I couldn't be that guy in society. You know what Crazy. I mean? Crazy. Yeah. That's so cool, man. So where do you live, live now? In California? I live in, I live in Newport Beach and also in um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. And, um, I've just been, I think Newport Beach is really awesome. I never wanted to live up here before, but I have friends that always lived up here. Yeah. And, Told me that I need I need to I need to turn Republican and move up here, and I, I, I don't know if I ever turn Republican, but I love living up here, and this is the place to be. I think I should have been. I should have. No came doubt. Up and my friend told me to come up here. I mean, shit. Orange County is super nice, man, and Newport is like the nicest part of it. So you're living well. I'm happy for you. Yeah, I was misinformed about the people up here. Yeah. I had no idea they were beautiful as they are. Yeah, I mean, the way people vote is one thing, but when you're eye to eye with somebody, that's what the real connection is. So I think you're in a good pocket of people, man. You'll be fine. 100%. I love Vegas too, man. I lived out in Henderson for like four years. Well, I, lived at, I lived in Henderson on Grand Hill and Seven Hills, those complex and stuff. Yeah, I lived in Lake Las Vegas. Oh, that was awesome too, back in the 90s and stuff. I yeah, that. yeah. That built. Yeah. So you remember doing what's up with that on the show? I don't remember it. Those was my big, um, those were my big cocaine years back then. So I don't remember much <laughs> that happened back then. <laughs> oh man, I hear you. I, I mean, I've never done it. So 
goes, that was the does. You lose, Excuse me? you know, what's happening, your perspective when you're on it. And I said, I've never really, I've never done it. So I don't really know like what the experience is like. You just like step outside of yourself when you're on it and you can't remember what's going on. No, no, most go, you know, it, it's an ego filled drug. Most, um, most drugs that um, inflate your ego, the, um, they're debilitating drugs. They're drugs that are gonna eventually kill you and tear your, tear your uh -huh. apart. You know, um, medicine or drugs that you use that strip you from your ego is medicine that heals you. Isn't that funny how that works? Hey, right, and, uh, and, and that's nature telling you. That's not nobody with a PhD. That's nature, that's God telling you that. Right, ain't nobody bigger than that. No doubt about it. And That's he also, so crazy. And God also has a strange way of making you a believer, too. Yeah, whether you want to or not. 100%. Uh -huh. 100%. Yeah. So what's going on, man? What's the plans? What's, what's the plan for the Tyson Farms? What's the plan for... The skies is the limit when, um, yeah. when God um, is ready to let um, the uh, coronavirus uh, succeed. You no, know, we're getting ready, we're going at it again, and we're going to open up our Tyson, Tyson Ranch Resort all over the country. And um, like I said, man, we're going to sky the limit. This is something I always wanted, but never knew I wanted to. It's something, listen, I've learned from this, um, my experience and being around my partners up there. Sometimes we forgot what we forgot we forgot. Yeah. You know, and it just comes to play when, you know, you're around the right energy and the right people and they think from the same perspective that you think about the world. No doubt. So what do you look forward to the most when you wake up in the morning? Excuse me? So what do you look forward to the most when you wake up in the morning? Just existing. Just taking yeah. advantage of that moment of the day, thanking God for waking up kiss my wife, make love to my wife, smack my son in the head, kiss my daughter, tell my mother-in-law I love her, hug my father-in-law, go outside, get to the office, come to my partner, we love each other, we make deals, the day is over, either go to dinner or we go back home, and then we come back, same thing, everything. And it's persistent. What we do in uh, Python Ranch, we're very persistent, inconsistent. Yeah. You know, yeah. not always motivated, but consistency yeah. kicks motivation's ass. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Yeah, I dig that, man. Like, I feel almost the same way, exactly. You know, like, I look forward to seeing those babies smile. Like, even if I'm, you know, dead tired and it's like, shit, I'm not ready to wake up. Like, as soon as I look over and them babies are smiling at me, it's like, well, here comes a brand new day and I'm thankful for it. So, yeah, I feel you. I look at my children, know what, um, I don't care how big my ego get, how much money I may have made at times and stuff. When I look at my children, they make me so aware of my, my mortality. That it'd be, yeah. They had to be gone, I'll be gone and it'd be them. Yeah. I'm lucky, you know? Absolutely. You're lucky to see what it is when you're seeing it at the time. Yeah. I'd love to see a grandchild. That's really, if I get one of those, then God can take me. I'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we gonna hold on to you, man. We gonna hold on to you like Morgan Freeman. You know he's a great, great granddaddy out there. Is he really? Yeah, man. He's he's I mean, been stretched out. I know Electric Company. Remember him from Electric Company? Come on, Back man. Legend. Can he Legend talk to the Afro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Between him and Lawrence Fishburne on those like learning shows, Lawrence was on Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Oh, that Pee Wee Herman too. Yeah, crazy. I love it, man. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna hold you all day, brother. I just wanted to no, chat with you for a really, minute. Thank you very much for coming on with us, man. It's really a pleasure. It's, it's my pleasure, man. Anytime. And you got. I started a podcast too. You have a new show. People were telling me. Who me? Yeah, I got it. My sitcom is coming. So hopefully, you know, it? the, it's called Keenan. Keenan, and what is going? Yeah. What, what is um, the synopsis of it? I'm a widowed father raising two young girls, basically. Holy moly, okay. Yeah, and like I have like a, a morning show in Atlanta, like a, a like a, you know, Ryan Seacrest and, and Kelly type show. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to raise my babies, you know, dealing with that I'm kind of. I'm learning, I learned late in life, but I'm, I'm learning how to do it now. Yeah. So we got to get you on the show, brother, whenever I'm you want. I'm to it. Anytime you want me, my friend, I'm here. Yeah, I started a podcast too, so I want to get you to come on there and see if I can take a yeah, part. Whatever you need from me, buddy, I'm there. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I love God you, brother. You. Thank you. God be with you. Absolutely, man. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Love.